is Tuesday night. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Yes, it's the DJ Roundtable, as always, on Tuesday nights, 8 o'clock here on Twitch Live. And if you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to over on Twitch. And you can subscribe on Twitch. It is TBM Productions underscore buddy. So TBM Productions underscore buddy on Twitch. And you can watch us live, ask questions. We want to hear from you guys. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can't do that, but you want to ask questions, ask questions down below or give comments, critiques, criticisms, Tom Fool, or anything else you want to say down below. We're always looking for feedback. We're always looking for stuff. And tell another DJ about the show because, you know, this is a show for DJs, about DJing, and about stuff that we do. And hopefully... Maybe we, you know, we share something that helps you out. And that's what it's about. It's helping out other great DJs such as yourself watching this right now. And again, thank you for watching. We appreciate that. Uh, we've got a couple of things going on here. First thing first, we're down a couple of DJs. It is summertime, stuff going on, things happening. Cool thing, almost didn't make it. He uh, was working late in his office. Uh, Dwayne got a new computer, <laughs> so he's working out some bugs there. So, uh, if you see a little glitches there, here and there, uh, you know, or you hear Hunter out of breath, he basically ran right into the room to get in here right on time. Uh, and again, other DJs, they'll be here shortly, hopefully. Uh, we'll see. It's like anything else. Um, they never know, <laughs> but we are we real working DJs. We are people who have businesses who are working and there's gigs on sometimes on Tuesday night, sometimes there's weddings, sometimes there's other things. So with that said, talking about gigs, Hunter, you just had a gig. You shared some photos with me. Uh, you want to tell the folks what you did, what happened, how it went and what it was. Uh, well, basically this gig was a end of summer family get together before my sister goes back to South Dakota as the last to run to celebrate the end of the summer. And it actually went very well. It was hot. It was humid. And I was pouring with sweat. So I did the best I could. And that's, that's the, um, that's the always hard part outdoor stuff and the heat. And, you know, the main mm -hmm. thing is that you kept cool, obviously, you kept yourself hydrated. Having you had it there at your house, correct? The party? Yeah, I had it at my house with just my family. So at least you know where drinks are at. They're right inside the refrigerator, nice cold. <laughs> yeah. Nice and cold in the Definitely. house. You go inside for a second or two, Definitely. go in the AC, come back out and have fun. Yeah. And just let you all know, I did post the gig log. There you go. So if you are watching this or you're watching here on Twitch or you're watching it anywhere, Make sure you go, links are down below for everyone's YouTube channel. Make sure you go to their YouTube channels and you do follow the YouTube channels and watch everything that's going on. So, uh, Dwayne, you said that, unfortunately, uh, you were in the middle of a gig and some rain came and hit some equipment and you had to replace your computer. So, what did you uh, replace your computer with or did you have before what you got now? Um, I had a mid-2012 uh, MacBook Pro 13-inch, and I got a um, 2021 M1 MacBook Pro, and it's 16-inch, um, 16 gigs. Uh, and, oh, yeah, a terabyte um, SSD hard drive. Wow. Yeah. So a decent size so hard drive. Bigger, yeah, that's the storage yeah. your music, like internal. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I had um, my old one had two um, two hard drives, a five twelve and a five twelve. I knew I needed it for my music and stuff. So, you know, yeah, my yeah, my computer is a twenty eighteen MacBook Air with one point six gigahertz dual core uh, Intel Core i five with eight gigabytes of RAM and a one hundred twenty eight gigabyte uh, SSD. My uh. My two computers I have, I bought one last year and one this year, are both from uh, Zendia Computers. They're gaming computers, custom built. I'm um, running 64 gigs of RAM, running i7, higher end i7 chips, uh, running, um, one's got a 30, 
Oh, I stand corrected. 3080 Ti card. Yeah. You always got a. Yeah, one's got a 3080 Ti card. One's got a 3060 Ti card for video cards or high end video cards for gaming, but also for vi doing video, like for TV and stuff like. That. And the graphics card, the GPU, is the one that actually works for stems. So having a better graphics card has tremendously helped out on stems because it doesn't tax the GPU. I mean, CPU, it taxes the GPU. So stems works on GPU power on virtual DJ and having those higher end cards works tremendously because at 2.0 on the stems, not a problem. I don't have any problem with that. Uh, and then one computer I have four terabytes on uh, the, the one from last year and then find out that I use the external hard drive much more, which these little external hard drives are great to have four terabyte little external hard drives. Um, because I have these, the um, new one I got, I just got one terabyte hard drive on it just to put everything on it. It's on, they're all SSD. So my C drive on both computers, one to two terabyte, one to one terabyte, they're SSDs and with either virtual DJ or Windows or any other program you run, it comes up very quickly. You don't have to worry about any kind of lag. And I've never run into lag either one of those computers. Now, I also have a couple other older PCs, which are gaming computers. Uh, but I will tell you that the uh, Zendia computers, I am very, 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 very happy with. And I know some people, you know, cool thing is one of them is a very big supporter of Apple. He loves his Apple computers. Matt loves his Apple computers too. I know DJs are split. Some are Apple, some are Windows. Whatever works for you that you love and you're you feel great about, that's what you want to keep. So if you're a Mac person, you love Mac, you have everything on Mac, then keep it. Get another Mac computer when your Mac computer dies. If you're a PC person like myself, then you know I'm going to go to another PC. Uh, get what you're happy with. Get what you can afford. Get the best you can afford. If you don't compromise, if you got to wait another three months or four months to save a few more dollars to get a better computer, do that. Especially now with stems and some of the other software, there's our Serato, Rekordbox, Virtual DJ. You want to have the little more RAM. You want to have the little more bigger processors. You want to have a little bit more oomph in the computer because to support those programs and to do things with stems. So that's one of the key things you want to look at is get what you're happy with. Um, it doesn't matter. You know, you're using it for work. Uh, just don't compromise. That's the biggest thing. Now, speaking of uh, information, uh, we have a comment uh, from today. I guys got to find it real quickly. And I will... Read the comment from today. He's got to open it up. Okay. This is from DJ Mikey Mike in Pennsylvania. Um, so he, this is going back to what we were talking about in the last show. Uh, he had a venue that would now allow him to bring in his own speakers into the venue. So the venue is saying you can't bring your own speakers in here. We have our own sound system. And according to him, they had two 10-inch Behringer speakers, not knowing what model or, you know, whatever uh, information on just two 10-inch Behringer speakers mounted on the walls. One was mounted about, they were about 25 feet off the floor. One was on the left side. One was on the right side. Uh, neither one was angled down and the maximum DB was 80 DBs. They had a preset volume control level. You had to use their audio system. It cut off at a certain level at 80 DBs, uh, which he had no control over. He had plugged his XLR cables into the wall and they ran everything from there. So basically you take your controller, you plug in your XLR cables into their system they control everything. For the ceremony, uh, he used his uh, JBL Eon, and he couldn't go over 35 decibels. Now, where 35 decibels is at, I don't know if it's uh, end of the property, if it's wherever, because 35 decibels, that, sounds, we, that would be wider yeah, that than talk and speech. 
Yeah, that sounds like a pretty good volume level, 35 decibels. Maybe 35 a, decibels. 35 and, decibels is a library with no wind, no sound, no nothing. The wind makes more noise than 35 decibels. If you go outside yeah, with that's a sound what I'm meter, looking. I'm looking at a, Yeah, I'm looking at a chart now. Yeah, it says 30 decibels is like um whispering and rustling. Like background music is, they have at 60 decibels. So yeah. People don't know they have arbitrary numbers. And those numbers, they have no idea what it is. So a municipality, a private entity, a, it doesn't matter, if it, wherever the, the county, state, uh, town, city, village, wherever the municipality is, they have requirements. But again, people who are not involved in the area of sound, they have no idea. They see a number. Oh, oh yeah, that's, that should be quiet. Not realizing that traffic on a road, just normal street traffic on a side street. I'm not talking about a major highway. I'm not talking about... An interstate, I'm talking about a, a side street where most of us live. Um, a car driving down there doing 25 miles an hour will make 64, 65 decibels. So a lot of people don't understand that. Like, okay, a car driving by is 65 decibels. You know, if you start showing people that kind of stuff, they're like, oh, wow, I didn't realize that. Yeah. And people don't realize it. And that's the bad part. So for the ceremony, he had uh, used uh, his Eon. Couldn't go over 35 decibels. Uh, this was sprung on the couple and us day of the wedding. So he didn't have no prior knowledge, which for Mike, he should have called before. I always call a venue, especially a venue I've never been to before. I make phone calls, ask questions. I have a venue, wedding coming up on uh, September 2nd. The girl who uh, is my contact was not there today. So I will make a phone call tomorrow and talk to her tomorrow then. Um, a lot of you know, facility managers or a contacts at facilities usually are off on Mondays and Tuesdays because they work the weekend, Saturdays and Sundays. So they're trying to give them you know, days off so they enjoy themselves, but she was off today. And this is one of the things that, you know, I always ask questions. You know, I, you know, we always want to kind of assume that we, as DJs uh, could bring our stuff in, bring our equipment in and do what we need to do. But the thing is that we need to verify that stuff and having it sprung on a couple, that's also a bad thing too, because that poor couple, you know, is expecting, you know, whatever they're expecting for sound and music and at 80 decibels, you know, I, I at cocktail hour, I'm at like 74 75 decibels at my booth at, 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 you know, my, my area. I, I've sat there with the app on my phone as well as a sound meter reading where I'm at, you know, 67, 68, 69, 71 decibels. It varies a little bit because depending on the, the song and how fast you're reading it. But, you know, you're, you, that's what you're talking about for like cocktail and dinner music, you know, kind of a, a background music. And if you're going into, and that's, you know, a few feet away from the speaker, if you're going into 80 decibels for dancing, that's really not much more than that. And that's pretty low. Uh, but is it manageable? Yes. It can't, is, it, is it horrible? No. But 35 decibels for a ceremony, you, you might as well not you know, reinforce the bride and groom because them talking is louder than the 35 decibels. And the question is where there's a lot of variables also, there, but it, it's a hard one. It so, does depend on how they I guess it does depend on the size of the ceremony area. Maybe they don't want too much disturbance or something. I don't know. Well, even I know again, my bear in Jersey, I, I was going to say, I can imagine because my I have Behringer's and if you have it high up on the ceiling on top of that, it's like it's almost like playing a like a little boom box radio. It's not you're not going to feel it on the dance floor. You will hear it, but you won't feel it. Yeah, especially a 10-inch woofer. If you're two 10-inch woofers with a subwoofer, like a 15 or 18, that's great because you that, that 10-inch turns into a mid-bass, and it sounds really great. Yeah, a 12-inch turns into a mid-bass. A 15 is too, a little too big for a mid-bass. So, like, uh, one of the best things to have is a 10-inch with a 15-inch woofer, or 8-inch, 10-inch with a 15-inch woofer, or a 12-inch with an 18-inch woofer, 
and that 12 inch becomes a mid base. You run it through the the subwoofer, and you you use the subwoofer as your base. You have your cutoff nice and low, and yet it gives that separation when it goes through everything. It goes through the DSP and everything like that to the tops. It has a nice clean sound, and that's that 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 12 inch or 10 inch woofer or eight inch woofer then becomes mid base. It's not really designed to like you know pound you in the chest. That's what the subwoofer is doing. But it's taking some of the vocals, pushing the vocals through there, and then you have your clean highs come out of the top. That's actually a very round system. But they're not doing that, just doing two 10-inch speakers. I don't care their Behringers. I don't care their, you know, JBLs. They could be JBL PRX, you know, 12s. They could be uh, QSC 12s. At 25 feet up the ground at 80 decibels, I don't know where 80 decibels measure it. Is on the dance floor, if it's at the booth, if it's at the back wall, whatever it is. It's not done right. It, it's kind of like some of the facilities I've gone into uh, that they have speakers in the ceiling and they're pointing straight down at the floor, including a subwoofer pointing straight down at the floor on the ceiling. So you walk up there, you look up, there's a subwoofer in the ceiling, point straight down. And then two speakers pointed slightly on angle, but basically on the dance floor. And it's like, yeah, this, this, this system is not right. It doesn't sound right. It sounds bad you get a lot of echo because you know i can actually yeah I can actually, yeah I can actually relate what it's like to use someone else's system because when i was at beach church and i got to dj we had six rcf speakers and two gbl subs but it was actually volume controlled from an x32 mixer from behringer the xenix x32 mixer so we can make it a little bit louder but we decided not to keep it as loud so it doesn't overpower the speakers or make it too loud. Well, you know, the other thing you can look at is having multiple tops, depending on how they're done, they're done right. You have a nice spread of sound. So each speaker doesn't have to be as loud to fill the room. And that's the thing is that you don't have to be crazy loud. Filling a room with nice quality sound, that's the big thing. Having two speakers like Mike ran in there, 25 feet off the ground, up in the air, point straight out. You know, bass has no place to go, especially a 10-inch woofer. Uh, you know, that's not create a lot of bass. It's not like a, a line array like my my uh, Maui 5s. They're an 8-inch sub, but they actually kick out some decent bass because, again, they are designed to be a subwoofer on a line array, so they kick out some bass. I would, I would, you know, me personally, if they said that, I'd be like, no, I'm sorry. I, I No, I, I can control sound. And, you know, I'd find more information out, but I would push back with the owner and be like, you know, again, you you want to tell the bride and groom that I can't do the job because the fact that I can't, I, I'm not trying to be the loudest thing in the world, but I'm trying to give good quality sound. That's not going to give qu good quality sound. I'm sorry. You know, it, it's one of the things you want to work with the facility, but, you know, they, oh, every DJ does that. I, you know, how many times do you guys hear that? Every I put every DJ there, right? Every DJ does this. It doesn't mean it's right. It just means that they always do it or they force other DJs. And talking with them a lot of times, you might be able to persuade them or show them there's other ways. And the other thing I look at, obviously, this facility has had guys come in there or girls come in there, there are DJs, and just redline the whole entire time, blast out the music, and their neighbors or businesses next door or whatever it is are calling and complaining to whatever municipality it is or the owner of the venue saying, you know, I'm going to go to, if you guys don't cut it out, I'm going to go to the, the, you know, the town hall meeting or village hall or city hall. And I'm going to go complain to them at the next board meeting. And, you know, my older man or my rep in the area is going to, you know, you know, they're, they're going to push it to get an ordinance and get you guys closed down. No owner wants that either. So it's one of the things you have to be empathetic to the owner and say, okay, fine. Great. Hey, what's up, Adrian? It's okay. It, it, you got to be empathetic with the right. owner and say, hey, that's fine and great. That happens. But let's work with you. Let's work this out and be professional and get us take care of it. But also, you kind of got to give a little pushback and be like, you know, this won't sound right. What you have there won't sound right. I need to have, I want to give some good sound. I can control the sound. And I have, this is why I always, you know, recommend have on your phone, there's a sound meter app. There's a Wi-Fi analyzer app. Have both those on your phone or on Amazon, or I actually have one from Radio Shack. 
buy a sound meter. They're not outrageously expensive. They're a great thing to have in your toolbox. You open it up, you can see where your sound's at. You can show them where you're at. You can show them, hey, listen to the sound. This is where we're at. We're at 70 decibels. We're below your threshold and we're at dinner and look how nice it is. People are hearing the music and not being blown out, but yet it sounds nice. So that's the key thing there. So Hunter, when you um, when, when you go out and stuff like that, do you ever, have you ever tried one of the apps for sound or that, or do you kind of judge it and see what's going on and Not you really. adjust I it? I just judge it. I, yeah, I, I just judge it and I just make the tweaks, make sure it, to where it actually sounds the best without distorting. What's your... And plus I bring my own... Yeah, you bring your own speakers. Uh, what is no, your speakers. trick to get good sound? What is your What is your go-to thing to make sure it sound sounds fantastic for your your client doesn't matter if, if it's your family so, or if it's for a pay client or whatever what, what's your trick that you do for a fantastic sound i don't really have a trick i just tweak it just <laughs> i just go to the trim make sure that it almost the midpoint same thing with the other trim and i make sure the speakers are on the in the middle and then i just turn up the volume using the up faders <coughs> And I, because there's like a digital sound meter that's on the controller, and it'll tell me if, it, if I'm in the red or the uh, yellow and stuff. I, I keep it right in the green. So yeah, the really output will tell you things. kind of what you're coming out of the board. It won't tell me how many decibels. Won't tell you that, you know, or if you're way out of uh, way out of uh, peak, you know, with uh, having too high highs or too. Uh, Two high lows or mids or whatever that you adjust your EQ. When my speakers do have indicators. Yeah, my my uh, speakers do have indicators, and even my external mixer has indicators of where, whether it's peaking or not. And the same thing with my controller. Yeah, you don't want to peak. You don't. You don't. You don't want to be. Uh, flat, you don't want to be flat red on your uh, speakers. That's never good. Um, you don't mind a little flick every so often if you're really if you're really driving them. You know, a little flick of red, but. You don't want that constant red light. You know, red is red is bad, but uh, red lighting is headlining, you know, some for some people. <laughs> um, Dwayne, on you for is there any tips or tricks that you do for setting sound for an event for a room or outside earth of that or um I have a set of songs that I use like I guess you could say speaker test. I looked up some good songs to use for like sound tests. So I play those, and it was great when I, I was using the EVs because it has the app. So I can go out and turn it up and down for my phone. But um, now with the line arrays, it's like, like I have to, when I play the music, turn it up, go out, see how that's hidden, and then come back and keep adjusting. But I try to keep everything. Well, my speakers, I keep it like at zero. It would be like at 6, 7 o'clock. I usually try to turn those. I usually don't have to turn those past 11 or 12. And then I just turn everything up from my uh, mixer and try to keep everything in the green. And then, uh, yeah. I have an MG10, so it's perfect because it does have a peak. It has a red dot to where I'm peaking. I just turn that down a little bit. Yeah, and, then I, and I, I try not to strain my controller part or keyboard. Oh, yeah. But I run it through... I. I noticed that when I run it through my um, external mixer, then I can really boost it and give it that punch without distorting and running hot. You know, what, what's your what's your go to songs for a speaker check? Um, I know Brass Monkey was one of them. Nah, that's a good one. Uh, I do. Uh, inter I do yeah. interesting, man. What's yours? Cool yeah, thing. I'll, I don't really have a dedicated song that i play to test out the sound i just play a random song that's in my library no matter what it is I you know you know anything. you know metallica's like, interest salmon right yeah yeah i know that one the nice thing about that is that you have a couple of things there you have the guitar intro you have bass yeah. drum you have bass kick yeah. you have vocals you have heavy guitar you have bass guitar so you have six things going on in yeah. that song and that attaches six parameters. I just downloaded that. Yeah. 
It is great because I just downloaded that song when I was at the office. I just downloaded that song off of BPM Supreme. I, I, I use that quite a bit. And people hear that, especially when we're doing sound check. And, and you know, you do. I, I always go to the loudest part to hear the room and then go down. So I, I go up to where I mm-hmm. think I should be for like really heavy dance floor, depending on how everything goes and the loudest I want to go. And then I start, you know, I play that to the vocals come on. Tracy usually stands out there. She'll go thumbs up. I'll come down to like cocktail dinner level. And once I come down to cocktail level, dinner level, um, then I will um, bring the volume down to that level. And that's where I will keep it at till the dance floor opens. But I want to hear max volume in the room. And I've had people go, uh, what was it? Uh, one of the venues I was at, the girl comes over. She goes, you're testing speakers. I go, uh, yeah, I go, we'll be done in a minute or two. She goes, okay. She goes, you're rattling my dishes. I'm like, really? <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry. She's like, no, she's like, you're rattling. She goes, my dishes are rattling. She's like, what kind of speakers you're running? I'm like, they're RCF J eights. She's like, I never heard of those. She goes, I see them. She goes, I can't believe that much sounds come out of those. I'm like, yeah, it, it's, it's one of the things that, um, you know, having things EQ'd and have it, you know, tweaked to sound good is the important part. And that to me is the big thing. I try to run very neutral and not add things until I have to. Um, but to me, it, it, it's it's one of the things when you're running a sound system and a sound check, you want to hear, do you hear echoes? Do you hear something? Do you, are your bass is too high? Is your bass too low? You know, do you add a little bit more bass? Do you have to take out your mids or highs? Is, is there a lot of glass? Is sound reflecting off windows? Those are the things I'm looking for and listening to and trying to make sure that it fills. But I also always love it when there's uh, people in there for the wedding party and they hear it, they start rocking out and stuff like that. Then you stop, they're like, nine times out of 10, are like, oh, come on, you can play the rest of it. It's like, no, that's it. Not until later. <laughs> kind of like a little tease. No, I actually, yeah, yeah. A couple of years ago, I DJ the Blast Barn. I had to keep it above a certain, I had to keep it at a certain decibel because it echoes between the two barns. So I have to keep it at a certain volume. Same thing with Sam's Barn. I have to keep it at a certain volume so it's not too loud. Oh, yeah. you, you, don't, you don't want you, people there to enjoy their hot dogs and sandwiches and french fries and, you know, <laughs> drinking a Coke and not, uh, dealing with uh, bleeding ears and stuff like that. You're there to provide some in- enjoyment, but not yeah. uh, pain. So, yeah, Dwayne, Dwayne, you were going to say something? <laughs> yeah. I was to, yeah, I was going to say my speaker test creek um, consists of Brass Monkey, Beastie Boys, Get Lucky, Daft Punk, Queens, Bo- um, Bohemia, <laughs> Raps- uh, Rhapsody, uh, Joni Mitchell's Help Me, Dirty Work, Stilly Dan, Pig, Stilly Dan, Rosanna by Toto, um, So Far Away, Dire Straits, Bonfire, Knife, um, Party, um, Bang a Rang a Rang, and Around the World, Death Punk. Wow. So those are- well, you, you know why all those songs, and you know, they're all older songs, you know why you want to use those songs, right? They're because they all before- know they weren't mixed loud. Well, they they're does they're done before digital compression. All the new songs, basically, oh, yeah. about twenty ten up, twenty twelve, you start getting into digital compression. And if you take a sound a song that is digitally compressed, you listen to it, and you listen to it uncompressed, or, it sounds or bad. maybe in the, yeah, maybe in the um mid 2000s early to mid 2000s when cd started to really become really really compressed especially if you're playing a rip cd that is already compressed well yeah and that's 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 you could run into that as well and that's why you always if you if you have to rip a cd you always want to do 320 kilobits that kind of releases some of that compression now is there a lot there yeah you would have to re edit it if you really wanted to re-eq it to get rid of the compression and take the compression out. But again, if you put a higher bit rate, it does help a little bit. It's not going to help tr- get rid of it totally. It's going to still be there. And if you get a, uh, someone who's a sound engineer, they'll hear it right away. They'll be, it, it's, it's like, you know, up oh, that song's compressed. Up oh, that song's compressed. And it's, it's you know, especially music nowadays, um, the streaming services, you use the streaming services, Music's compressed. Oh, yeah. 
because they're trying to you know fit a five pound bologna in a three pound bag to get it through the internet to get to you so you can have it and play it. But a lot of times those songs are you hear you hear the warbling and wobbling a lot of times, and it's like yeah, I I, I don't use streaming services because of that, but a lot of newer uh, songs. I, I I could hear, especially in headphones, I could hear the whirbling, wobbling kind of sound, the, the compression sound. I, I can kind of hear that. So uh, I could tell you that a lot of the professional services, uh, such as uh, uh, promo only and pool, they're pretty good about uh, not having it in there. Um, they really, you know, give really high quality. And some of the other sites, Extendamix for music videos, they they have high quality stuff as well. I don't run into it as much on that as I do with some of the other uh, sites. So it's like, it's like anything else. It is what it is. You you can't control because you need a song for something and it's through uh, a site or whatever your, your services, you need to just make sure be yourself aware. And then you need me to tweak it a little bit here and there to make sure it's a hundred percent. Now going on to the fun stuff going on here uh, today uh, August the 22nd, 2023. If you're watching this in the future, hey, great, you're in the future. I'm in the past. Uh, <laughs> uh, to, here in Chicago, um, today, tomorrow, and Thursday, we're going to have a heat advisory. Uh, tomorrow's supposed to be 99 degrees, uh, and they're talking 101 on uh, Tuesday with heat indices 114, 116 degree heat indices. Uh, you're talking dew points. In the upper 70s, uh, I think the overnight low, one of the nights is like 80-some degrees, 81, 82, 83 degrees, something like that. Um, with that kind of heat, obviously equipment does not like heat, and sometimes you have to do outdoor events. And we talked a little bit about this before, um, about cooling. And cool thing, I know uh, we uh, you had your event outside. Uh, did you do anything different this time around? to keep either yourself or your equipment cool from the last time we talked about it. Um, and, you know, we talked about weather and about cooling a little bit, but this is more, you know, is there anything that you do or anything you could think of that would help you out, uh, keep your equipment cool, your computer cool, your controller cool, speakers, well, yourself? Well, I use, yeah. Well, I use the new Mark Mixstream Pro, and that thing never gives up on me, not even once. I mean, in direct sunlight, it still keeps on going, never gives up. It's got like a little mini fan in the back to keep it cool. Unlike my computer, when I bring it outside, yeah, that does freeze up. So that's why I bought the Newmark Mixing Pro, so I can use it outside without to worry about my computer freezing up or the music pausing or anything like that. And to keep myself cool, I just blink, drink plenty of water, plenty of Gatorade to keep myself hydrated. Okay. And sometimes yeah, was... self hydration is important. Dwayne, yeah, what about you? My... I know you got caught in you got caught in the rain the other day, which stinks. And we talked about it a little bit in the beginning. And you had to get a new computer, which actually, the camera looks really uh, fantastic. Congratulations on a new computer. Um, but uh, the downside is that you had to buy a new computer because the other one went to the great beyond because of uh, of rain. But uh, the other thing is heat. How do you uh, keep yourself cool and your equipment cool? Uh, I try to use a fan, and then I have a computer. One is. Let me see if I can show you real quick. Uh, like, it's like a one of those pads <laughs> that you can put uh, fan pad. So I use that for my um, computers, and then also I got also I make it a habit of taking that one of those air cans and blowing through the fans because that like um keep it the all the dust from out of it but getting hot and other than that it's just basically trying to stay out the sun where well, direct sunlight oh yeah that, every, and people, almost yeah. every almost every single time i dj outside i'm in direct sunlight but this yeah, time, yeah. and this time my dad helped me out this past time putting out my 10 by 10 tent so that kind of helped keep the sun off is using my tent. That's another thing you can use a tent. Huh. I used the tent. <laughs> I used, I used, let me tell you, I had my tent and then I have weights on my tent. And then when I saw the, and then I used the app. And the app said the rain wasn't supposed to come till 30 minutes after the event, but it decided to come late. 
So I saw the I saw the clouds coming. So I was like, let me I have um panels for my um tent. So I put one um side of the tent up that's close to the speaker. And when the rain came, everything was cool. Then all of a sudden I noticed the rain was starting to creep in from the back of my tent. So by the time I tried to put up the back panel, this big gust of wind came, picked up my tent with the weights, blew it across the parking lot. And then and that's when it started hailing that everything just got soaked. So it's like, you know, whenever the whenever we see rain in the forecast on the day of my events, we just cancel or move it inside. Yeah, it, it wasn't supposed to. It came. It caught everybody off guard because even the bouncy house, because they said they don't um bring it out if it's like raining and stuff, and they said they will bring it out and leave early and it caught them off guard too it just and it's like a, it's like a couple of years ago it almost rained on the day of one wedding where the ceremony was supposed to be at the bride's house outside but we moved it inside of the shrine club so everything was inside yeah, yeah but we... one thing i would say it's important to make sure you have insurance on your stuff too so if i it goes definitely out... would say that so um uh... When you went and got your computer, if you don't mind asking, where did you get your computer at? How hard was it to get? Um, was it something you simply you walked in, grabbed it, they had it in stock, or did you have to wait a while? Uh, what was the uh -uh. process? Well, when I took my computer in, it was they had backed up everything. So my it was just basically the power switch and the um touchpad and a keyboard was um water damage. But the, I I paid extra to have them back up my um, um, hard drives since that worked. So I had all of that. And good thing with Mac, they have a time machine feature. I had right. that going. So, um, but they did. I took it in on Sunday and they looked at it and they said if they can fix if Since it was old, they said they'll try to fix it. I took it to the Apple place. And Apple okay, said they the wouldn't Apple even store? touch it because it's okay. old. Yeah, so they said it's so old, we're not even going to touch it because it's probably going to cost more to repair it um, instead of getting worth. a new one. Yeah, so Micro Center, I had the I bought the Apple that Apple, the Apple Care with that laptop. Yeah. So they looked at it, but at the I same time, um, yeah, I went over to the Mac department at, at Micro Center and looked at um, the different computers and refurbished ones, and they they. They had two left, so I was prepared to kind of like move forward because I had our back to school event that Friday, so I just so moved you, quickly. You so bought... it wasn't hard. It, I I saw on Amazon they had some that you can get overnight too, but I you... like to look and feel. Yeah, what I have touch it. To now order. you bought you bought from Micro Center. You bought a uh, refurbished from Micro Center. Yep, and it was fifteen hundred. Uh, regular yeah. price, I think, is nineteen or just over two thousand. So you save a few dollars. Factory, they, have, they of course, Micro Center gives a warranty. If you're in an area that doesn't have Micro Center, Micro Center, they have it here in Chicago. They have it in certain markets. Um, they are a computer store. They, and there's still a few of them around. You can look on online. They do have a website uh, presence. You can order stuff uh, if you don't have a Micro Center near you. I love Micro Center because of thumb drives. I buy my thumb drives from Micro Center. Um, I, you can buy oh, them on Amazon. I, yeah, um, I, I get I get my computers from Best Buy. I I, I get I Micro Center stuff. Uh, thumb drives uh, again. The computers I get from uh, Zendia, which is in Utah, but thumb drives like I have these. This is why I put my customers' music on. It's, it goes into a little baggie. It goes connect, and it goes onto their paperwork. So it is all their music that's been proofed. Goes into a, a little baggie, just like this. A little clip on it, and this this got a little. This was got to get replaced. It's got a little smudge on the name, but T Band Productions I have on the bag. This we use this use these over and over. A little clip, clip it onto paperwork. Wow. And that thumb drive is all their special music. So I know exactly yeah, what's like, on there. That sounds like, a, like not like a bad idea. So yeah, I, I usually I, use the reload tape. Yeah, I usually use the reload tape digital audio recorder. And I record all my 
mixes to here and then I'll have to, uh, I guess, make custom thumb drives with my name on it with their mix intact, their playlist, their video, all intact. Well, I might start doing that. A pack. This is Micro Center. Uh, let's see here. You can kind of see. This is Micro Center right on top. Uh, these are on Amazon. This is a pack of, what was it, uh, two, four, five, 16 gig uh, thumb drives. Uh, not very expensive. Uh, one of the things that's perfect that offering... like, go ahead. Mm -hmm. One of the things we're offering now is the uh, the digital guest book uh, for weddings, which is the phone. People pick up, leave a voicemail. So our now our thought has gone to if someone does that, you know, I have a thumb drive with their music on it. You know, I had the little cover, put the little cover back on it on this. Um, I'll take their the thumb drive I've used for that night, which has on their music. It could have on their gobo. It could have on a bunch of things. I'll take that, uh, and now a separate thumb drive always for a gobo. But I'll take their main thumb drive with their music on there, all their special songs. So it's not all the songs of the night. It's all their special songs. So first dance, daddy daughter, grand entrance, uh, anything for ceremony, all the songs they called out. 16 gigs, more enough space now that we have a problem. Take this thumb drive, take the audio from the audio guest book, pull that onto this thumb drive, give them the thumb drive at the end of the night. And that way they have a they have their um voicemails basically on that phone. And they have their music of that night and they have all there. They can listen to the music they, they picked and they can uh listen to the uh, messages from everyone who left a message for them. So it's, they're not really expensive. Again, you go to Amazon uh, and you look up there um, and they go down in price all the time. Memory keeps getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. And if I look, uh, let's see here. Oh, there it is on Amazon for 20 bucks. <laughs> it's not really expensive. Uh, nope. Oh man, that'd be perfect. Especially with new cars coming with USB ports, they can plug into their car and listen to it when they're driving. That's that's cool. Yeah, again, I just bought um, gaffer tape. Is also great too. I, I buy different colors of gaffer tape. So yeah, five pack of sixteen gigs, nineteen ninety eight. If you want to go to a uh, two pack uh, of uh, 32 gigs, 10 bucks for two 32 gigs. If you want to have um, a four or five count of uh, 32 gigs, it's $20. Basically, same price as the 16 gig. And they're 3.0 drives. Now, they also have, they just came out with uh, from Microsoft because they get stuff from Microsoft all the time. Um, they just came out with uh, USB-C thumb drives. And if you go to the store, uh, you go up by the counters where the register's at, they have these thumb drives in, and I'm sure you've probably seen it, Dwayne, if you've been, you've been to, you go to, uh, uh, to uh, Micro Center, they have at the counters, they have SD cards and they have thumb drives there in these little containers right behind the cashier. You just tell them how many you want. They have 256, they have 512 cards, uh, I think they have one terabyte now, and it, it's it's always always a great way of doing it. And I even have a few of the older black ones that are I want to say six uh, gigabytes. Um, do I have one? I don't have one in front of me right yeah, now. This will be perfect. Yeah, this this will be perfect. Yeah, this these thumb drives will be perfect. Uh, so. I actually have a, another gig on September 23rd for my aunt and my uncle for their 40th wedding anniversary. And it's also my cousin-in-law's military retirement party, so I can make them a thumb drive and hand to them. Yeah. That's and again, cool. they're The ones from Micro Center, I never had a problem. Um, they're, they're really good quality. And Micro Center, I would definitely would say, is a great place, especially for computer stuff. I You know, go there. I, you know, I, when I built, um, 
this computer, which is actually over here, this computer I built, um, I looked at Micro Center for parts. Newegg was a little bit cheaper on a couple of things, but their pricing on, especially for parts, you want to build a PC, are really, really good. They have, you know, they have PCs, they have TVs. They're kind of like a mini Best Buy. They're not as big as a Best Buy, but they don't have like appliances. They don't have all the other stuff. They have, uh, they do it uh, last time I was there, which was uh, a couple months, a few months ago, 3D printers. They have tons of stuff for, re, you know, fixing your computer uh, for doing electronic repair. They have tons of self repair kits, printer paper, um, cans of duster. If you need duster for, you know, to dust out your equipment, uh, you want, you know, cans of air. They usually have like a, a like a four pack or five pack right when you walk in and the, the dump ins really cheap. Um, they are probably one of the best places to go for getting uh, certain things for your computer and for your equipment. And, and trust me, uh, the cans of air, the cans of uh, that the dusters, the can dusters are nice to have to clean your equipment. So a cool thing, what do you usually use to clean your equipment with? I, I use usually a can duster or I use a Swiffer to clean stuff. And then if I need to clean off like a screen or something like that, I have screen cleaner um, with a, a microfiber cloth to clean the screens. What do you usually use to clean your uh, your equipment with? To tell you the truth, I never clean my equipment. Never. Never have? Never have. Oh, wow. I I always clean mine because I always see dust on it. <laughs> Get that right angle, especially on, like on my XZ. Just the other uh, day, I, I, I was sitting there, uh, looked up, and I was right at the right angle, and I just saw dust and everything. I'm like, hey, Tracy, because she was in front of me, and we are just just got done setting up and she was ready to grab uh, our tool uh, cart max and move it. Uh, and I'm like, can you grab me the, uh, the duster out of there? She's like, okay, she give me the duster, just dust everything off, all the dust off of it, clean this, make sure your screen's all nice and clean, you know, the, on the, uh, the front panel and stuff, just went through everything. And Cause to me, seeing that dust on there, it just looks bad. It just like, you know, people see that and it's like, you just don't care. You know, but if you're outside an outdoor event, you get dust on stuff very quickly. Um, it, it, it's amazing because it's black and it attracts dust. And, you know, I have, you know, in the wintertime, I'll put on a terry cloth towel covering the uh, controller or covering stuff up to just in case there's any kind of moisture, it'll absorb moisture. But in the summertime, um, I have a deck saver, the plastic, clear plastic deck saver. I'll put it on there to protect it. So that way, you know, get out nothing hitting the, the, the screen or anything like that. So, so Dwayne, what about you? What do you use to clean your equipment? How do you, how do you go about doing that? I try to keep it covered, but I have a, I have a deck saver for my um, Rev1 and XX2. And if I have to wipe it down, I have the blue, you know, micro center or red micro center fiber cloth. I try not to use, I try not to put spray and stuff on there because it leaves streaks on stuff. So, yeah, sometimes, sometimes it does. You got to do a little, you got to kind of do a little bit of buffeting the screen and stuff like that, kind of clean it up. And it's like, yeah, um, it can, it can, it can leave a little streaks. Again, you got to do a little extra work. Microfiber cloths, you, you have to get a good quality microfiber cloth. There's 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 ones that say they're microfiber and they are technically microfiber, but they're like it, it, they're like bad quality or not really great quality. What, many moons ago when I worked in the optic field, uh, and you I dealt with you know sunglasses, prescription glasses, and so forth, so on. Microfiber cloths were not as prominent as they are today, but they had to have high quality optic level quality microfiber and it's, it's a different kind of feel and material to it so that's the ones i usually go for if i go for microfiber is the optic quality so it's not that to clean glasses with to clean the screens you get actually less smearing plus the cleaner also you want to look at what the cleaner is too and you want to spray it on the rag and wipe you don't want to spray it on the screen because that can cause a whole nother level of problems especially now you just you know replaced your computer and it's like Oh yeah, hey, I just replaced it because of the fact that uh, 
you know, the rain decided to uh, destroy my other computer and you don't want to uh, put more money into that and, you know, waste that money you just put out for that. So when you, um, when you got your new computer, like I ask you this question, cause uh, I know I ran into it with my computer um, and I, I use Chrome and stuff like that. So it, it, you know, you have your Chrome follows you. I'm sure Apple does the same thing. Apple follows mm. whatever you know instrument you're using, phone, computer, tablet, whatever. Chrome does, you know, my, uh, not Microsoft, but uh, uh, Google does the same thing. It follows you on your computer, on your tablet, on your phone. Uh, did you run into at any time when you were transferring stuff over from your old computer to a new computer, stuff that wouldn't work with a new computer because it's wasn't updated enough for the newest version of your computer? You know, older apps or older software. Yep. It's like, yep, I won't work your new computer now. You ran into yep. that? Um, yeah, it was a couple, but there was a mic. There was like little minor stuff that I used with my students at school, and but that those had stopped once you got to. I forget which operating system it was because I had accidentally up, updated my old computer, and then the program stopped. So I had the hardest time trying to go back to whatever that last one was. But um, yeah, there was a couple of them that won't run. It's like the ones that uses um, like flash driven kind of stuff. Um, those definitely don't work anymore. Um, and there was a couple of other ones with the memory. There was like a, if you were lucky and the um, the people have updates for the, the run with the M1 chip and all that stuff, you're fine. But if it, if it doesn't, then you're just stuck. I, I heard from Apple people that the M2 chip is the better of the two chips. The M1 is a good chip, but the M2, I, I, I have heard from people work better with, uh, especially with Serato and Rekordbox. Something with uh, how the operation or architecture of the chip, it just seems to work better with those. Uh, how you how is it working with you, the M1 chip with Serato? How is it working with all your software? Oh, I love it because you you gotta remember I had a um, 2012, so anything new is going to be way better <laughs> anyway. But I finally got yeah. I was thinking of the 2012. I still have my mid 2012 MacBook Pro from when I graduated high school. Uh -huh. And I now gave it to my mom, and she's using it for her work and all that stuff. Yeah, because I, I like it. it yeah. It's just the fact that it finally just stopped. But I I like the fact that now I don't have to pre-plan using stems because I used it at um this um back-to-school event. So it was nice to have an idea and knowing that once I hit that that stem, that uh, echo the vocals out, or stop the music, it's going to stop. And you don't have to wait for it to um, to process. So, so far, so so far for me, everything works. Good. Glad, glad yeah, as of especially... yeah, yeah, as of, yeah, as of recent, I did move and make the switch over to Engine DJ. And let me tell you, Engine DJ works really well with my Mixstream Pro. Yeah, Engine, Engine, and also, is, Engine is interesting software. Yeah, now also... Uh, I like the fact that with the M1, um, I can analyze more than four tracks at a time. So if I download a whole bunch of music, I think it was like eight. It was a whole bunch of tracks. This, yeah, so I'm, I'm, yeah. Up. I'll, and with me, I still have an Intel processor still. Intel. <laughs> so I'm, far, I'm basically way far behind. <laughs> I should be getting a new computer next year. What you uh, have you have an, you you know what you got for a processor i5 or i7 for Apple? Yeah, it's it's an i5 with eight gigabytes of RAM. The basic spec MacBook Air is the only spec that was out there at the time when the 2018 came out. And that's eight that's, gigabytes that's, of RAM, not for i5. <laughs> and that's that's one of the things you know. Again, uh, I, I, there's a uh, song from uh, We're Al Yankovic uh, all about the Pentiums. And he in the in the songs a lyric basically saying, uh, how old is your PC? It's you know, if it's a week old, it's an antique. You know, it was, you know, basically obsolete, we'd pull it out of the box, which is true. You know, here you have a 2015 computer uh that it's still running hundred percent, it's still you're still gigging with it, still works great, you know. And Dwayne had a 2012, 
And you think about that, that's an 11 year old computer that he was still gigging with. And, you know, okay, hey, you know what? 11 year old computer, uh, you're forced <laughs> upgrade, unfortunately. But fortunately mm -hmm. for you, with the upgrade computer, now you're bulletproof now for quite a while with, you know, all the updates mm -hmm. coming up. I'm sure uh, Serato, now especially, they merged with, uh, uh, with um, Alpha Theta. Checker box. Well, that's Alpha, Alpha Theta, Theta. Yeah, that's, we... that's Pioneer USA. Yeah. And yeah. it'll be there, interesting. Yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah. A lot of the features will be moving into Rekordbox pretty soon. And, and Serato is going to be no more. Who knows? Who knows? I, I, you know, everything that, you know, that it, it looks right now, again, what <laughs> they're saying is they're, they're running Serato and running Rekordbox. Who knows years from now? I have no idea. I'm not going to look at a crystal ball and guess because I'll probably be dead wrong. But whatever software it is in the future, be it uh, a hybrid between the two or they keep the two separate or they stick with Rekordbox or they can stick with Serato. Whatever it is that Alpha Theta has for plants down the road, no one knows except for them. And, I, you know, again, it, it's, it's going to be challenging. And having a new computer, having a 2021 uh, computer, it's going to give you a leg up on a lot of people. And, you know, cool thing, you know, his computer still runs great. And he's running engine and stuff like that. He's not really using his computer as much as he used to for uh, for uh, his controller. But if he does... Now that I got the rock booth. Yeah, now that I got the rock, yeah, now I got the rock booth, my laptop-based controllers may not fit on that rock booth anymore. I might as well use an all-in-one. Yeah, and that's the thing like is that, you know, alone. technology keeps marching forward and, you know, us as uh, us DJs, you know, keep spending money on new and new equipment and it, it's it, it's interesting where things go, you know. Uh, buying, you know, having an XZ or having a, uh, uh, a, a Rev 5 or uh, having a Rev 10 or having anything, you know, it, it's interesting, you know. And again, uh, I know uh, DJ uh, Bre uh, Brentley, he has the uh, Rev 10. And he had a problem with the, the crossfader and uh, he has sent it into, back to alpha theta uh, for servicing. And I know he'll get back um, sometime in not too distant future when I, if he was here, I'd ask him if there was any update on it or anything like that. But it's, it's, it's one of the things that, you know, it is very interesting to see where this technology is going to go, you know, and especially uh, I know, um, the uh, AI for the uh, lighting system for DMX, that is a cool thing. And I saw that um, uh, Travis uh, from Kentucky, he uh, uh, he had uh, his, um, was it AI light show? Uh, he had a video up on YouTube. Uh, I'm going to link it down below uh, for you guys so you can take, go take a look at it if you haven't done so for uh, Elite Entertainment. Um, he... Uh, he did it and he did a demo on it and he showed it off. It looked pretty cool. And I looked at, I think the price on it's like 900 bucks for the unit, but he is doing a lot with it. And it's pretty, pretty cool. They have right now, he got one of the first ones. Uh, Cause he's been, you know, he's been talking to them directly and they're like, Hey, you know, he paid for it and he, he bought it and he's one of the first people to buy one. So he got one of the first models. I'm gonna wait a little bit and see. And that's the but... first, that's, yeah, that, that's one of the things I like about my Mixstream Pro. It's got lighting control, so it's a lighting controller and an actual controller on one unit, and it's standalone. I don't even need a laptop anymore. Well, I know, I know, Brentley. He liked the uh, with um, Record Box and the DMX port on his controller on the uh, Rev, uh, the Rev Ten um, uh, that had the plug right there for DMX and he ran DMX out to his lights and they were doing a bunch of stuff. He was able to control them. He loved that feature. So, you, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what comes out with the next stuff. You know, I, I have the XZ now for over a year, um, year and a half now. Uh, I love it. They come out with a new XZ tomorrow. Would I get another XZ? Probably not. I'd probably wait at least another year. So if they came out with a second generation tomorrow, I I don't I have oh, no yeah, idea. Was, they come out a year from now, whatever they come out yeah, with a, a new yeah. XZ, I'll probably wait a little bit afterwards just to make sure the problems are worked out. But again, just putting out twenty three, twenty four hundred dollars for mine, I don't want to buy another one. <laughs> oh man, our already did, by already. Wow. Yeah. 
We went by really yeah, fast. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is always great. And again, if you haven't done so already, make sure you smash a like button. Make sure you click the follow button. If you've been done so right. If you're watching us on Twitch, make sure you follow us on Twitch. We're here every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock Central Time. It's 9 o'clock Eastern Time, 6 o'clock Pacific Time. And we have a lot of DJs come out here. Again, this is, I uh, know, a lot of stuff going on tonight. Uh, Matt had uh, a birthday party to go to. Uh, I know uh, Brentley, he had stuff going on. Uh, Jeff's got stuff going on. You know, the, we're working DJs, have families, and, you know, there's stuff to, stuff going on. Life gets in the way. This is the fun stuff. And we're I here to share information close. with you guys. Yeah, I was very close not making it. Yeah, you I was did. very close not making it. If not, Dwayne and I would have done it. If not, I would do it. You know, it's like we do it when we do it. And, you know, Dwayne being a teacher and stuff like that, I know he's got his schedule. Cool thing, working in his office. He's got his schedule. And it's always grateful for having you guys here. Guys, thank you so much for coming in tonight. And thank you for watching. If you're out there watching, make sure, again, smash the like button. Follow everyone here. All the links will be down below in the description. Other than that, guys, have a good night. Peace out. Peace.